everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to continue on with the 1950s Cinderella pink dress project and we are starting right where we left off last week. So if you have not seen last week's video, do check down in the description for part one of this project and this week we will be finishing this project. Knock on wood. So the first thing that I have to do is that I have to take up the waist just a little bit. It wound up just being too long in the bodice in the front here. So I've marked out with a pin where the new seam line needs to go and I need to undo this seam and then take that up. And the second thing that I need to do is I need to attach the collar and bind off the neckline. Now that the zipper is in and everything, this is perfectly acceptable to do. And I know I said in the last video that I was going to serge the collar at one point, but frankly, I don't think I need to. I mean, it's going to be completely bound off, so it's not a problem. I'm just going to be binding it with bias tape, by the way. That should work just fine to bind it, and I should have some white in my stash, so I'm just going to bind it with white bias tape. So those are the first things that I'm going to get to, but while I go sew those, let's go over to sponsor Rebecca for a little word from today's sponsor. Thank you, Sewing Rebecca, and thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. I've talked about Skillshare a handful of times on this channel, but in case you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. On Skillshare, you can find thousands of inspiring classes on topics ranging from productivity to web design, photography to music, and so many more. My favorite class that I've taken lately actually comes from the one and only Bernadette Banner. Her class is on hand sewing basics and is a must if you've never hand sewn before. As you probably know, I am the world's slowest hand sewer, so I decided that this class would probably be a good fit for me as well, and that was absolutely correct. In the first 15 minutes of the class, Bernadette had already taught me a whole new way of knotting my thread before sewing, which is so much easier than what I've been doing. One of the many nice things about Skillshare is that the classes are really meant for your schedule. Many of the classes are under an hour and you can pause, rewind, or rewatch classes as often as you like. And what's wonderful is that the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description below will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can explore your creativity and unlock your limitless creative potential. And now, let's go finish the Cinderella dress! Thank you, sponsor Rebecca! And with that, the waist has now been reset right here. I did not cut off the excess. I'm gonna wait until at least when I try it on and see how it goes. And I also have attached the collar and done the binding on the inside of the collar. I stitched that down by hand on the inside. So that is all set now. And really the body of the dress is pretty much done at this point. I mean, really everything else is skirt decoration around the hem other than the one big bow that will be right here possibly with some bow tails here. Not sure if I'm going to do that. And then I do want to put a hook and eye at the very top of the neck, just because I find that it's easier to do up a back zipper when you have that anchor point up there already. So that is the one thing that's going to happen up there besides the big old bow. So that means that now it is time to start on the skirt. So I mentioned this in the last video, but I have already ripped a whole bunch of these panels. These are eight inches tall and the full width of the fabric and I have ripped eight of them and I just ripped them so that they could be on the grain. I have not yet pressed them or removed all of the strings that you get from ripping but I do have eight of these and these if my math is correct are going to be two of these per every one quarter of the circle skirt. And so these are going to get sewn together, hemmed, surged on the top, gathered up, and then attached to here. I think I am going to gather these with gathering threads as opposed to with my ruffler foot, but I might do a little test with the ruffler foot and see if I like how that looks. Not sure yet, but I am going to go ahead and start putting 
all of these together. So I've been trying to work through some weird fit issues that I have noticed with the dress as I've been like putting it on for different things. So basically I put it on to check the hem length to see if any of the circle skirt had fallen out on the bias, which they tend to do, but lately have not been doing to me. And again, it did not stretch on the bias. So that's great. And I can go ahead and just put the ruffle on. I have decided to gather it. I tried to do a test of the ruffler foot where it would do it all in one step so that it would ruffle or do the little pleats onto the pink of the skirt. But it was super, super irregular, it kept skipping stitches and then like losing the seam line. So I was just like, you know what? No, we'll do it the old fashioned way. I'll gather it up and I will pin it and sew it in place. But while I've been trying it on for all of that, I have been noticing some fit issues. So the first major one was that the bodice was somehow huge. I'm talking like two inches too large in the front. So I actually wound up undoing right around the darts here and taking in each dart by half inch on each side. So one inch total in each dart. And that fixed the waist issues. I then put it back, you know, put the gathers, pull them up a little tighter and put them back right here. So that fixed that issue. But then I also noticed that the darts were just not going right. I think I mentioned this to you before. It might have been last week's video where this dart in particular was too far up and was doing a weird little puckery thing. So I undid part of it and tapered it back a little farther. But you know what? It's still doing that. And I think the angle itself is wrong. I think it's just going way too high on my bust. So I've marked with a pin here where I think the dart apex, the point of this dart really needs to be. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to undo the majority of this dart because I don't want to have to undo it into the side seam. So like if I can avoid there at the base, because otherwise that's undoing the side seam and potentially undoing the sleeve. I'm not undoing all that. That's not worth it for this dart. But if I can do that, then I will. Also, I feel like these darts, I, I mean, I just redid these so that they were taking out more fabric and being a different shape, basically. But it wasn't enough. I need like a curve out. I did a straight line on the dart and I really need it to curve like that. So I think that's what I need to do there. So some tweaking that I have to do that's delaying, you know, where I should be on this project a little bit. And I think I'm going to continue gathering up the ruffle, put that on, and then maybe do more of the darts, even though that does add more bulk in the dress. But like, also that weight is going to make the dress hang differently. And that I feel like is the problem with when you're fitting a bodice that is attached to a skirt. You can fit that bodice all day long, but once you put the skirt on, the bodice is going to hang differently on you. Like there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Skirts are heavy, especially a gathered circle skirt. There's just a lot of fabric there. It's not that it feels heavy. It's just that it is going to pull the bodice down in a different way. So. Anyway, I've got work to do. I think I'm gonna do that ruffle first and then work out these darts if I can. Still not perfect, but definitely better. This one, I have changed the angle of the dart. This one, I have not done anything to. I did also increase that dart on the bottom here. Again, it's still not perfect. I'm not sure how to make it perfect, but it's definitely better than this side. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side that I did to this side. And then that dart problem should be, I mean, at least more or less solved. Dora is really making this whole attaching a ruffle thing very difficult when she lays on literally like the entire dress. Dora, how am I supposed to attach my ruffle? She says, Mom, I don't care. Pet me. Okay. Okay, I will pet you. Can I have my ruffle back now? So I did manage to steal the dress back from Dora and the skirt ruffle is now on. And oh my gosh, she's looking so much more like Cinderella now. And it's making me really, really excited. So now it is time to do things in light pink. It is time to make the really large bow that goes here. All of the bows that go around the skirt down at the bottom. And also the band of light pink that goes right in between the hot pink and the white. I think I'm going to do this as kind of just like a pleated straight band. But I have not yet decided that. 
So for the bust bow right here, I took some ribbon just to try and figure out the scale. And this is really wide ribbon. I haven't measured it, but I think it's like four and a half inches wide. And I just kind of pinched it in place in the center. And I think that this is just about the scale that I want for this bust bow. And I am going to do this like I did my Cinderella bows last time where you do actually get the full loop around like that. It's not just like a flat thing that's pinched in the center. So I'm going to use this ribbon to scale my bow. Basically, it's going to be from the pinch point and then around, not this extra right here. And then I have to double the width by two and add one inch for seam allowance. And that is going to allow me to cut out the proper amount. And if that wasn't clear, since I feel like it wasn't, this was the ribbon minus that excess. And then I'm doing basically twice the width this way, plus a half inch on each of those four seam allowance. I've done bow tutorials in other videos, but for a really quick one, basically you're going to take that piece, fold it in half lengthwise hot dog style, seam the edges together here and press them open as much as possible. Then you are going to turn this right side out. And with this seam as centered as possible, you are then going to serge or otherwise finish the edges before folding this up. You can either have the seam on the inside or the outside. It's really personal preference, but I'm doing it on the inside and you are going to fold that up, do a seam right here, half an inch away from the side or however your seam allowances you prefer. And then we are going to do the center of the bow. By the way, the dimensions that I started with on this were 20 inches this way and 10 inches this way. Now we have a little square or rectangle, I guess, that is four by 3.5, 3.5 here, four here. We are going to take this, fold this over, do a seam right up here. Basically, we're doing the same thing that we did with this, except that one is going to go over the other like this to form the center. So I'm going to go ahead and do that seam up and then we're going to press it, turn it right side out, do the ends, finish them off like before, sew them together and put this ring over that. And just like that, we have a cute little bow. To be honest, I'm not positive if I love the scale of this bow. I feel like maybe a tiny bit shorter this way would have been possibly better, but I'm going to wait and see. That's a super, super easy fix. I mean, literally all I have to do, slide this tube off. It's not stitch in place or anything. I just slide this off and then make that seam allowance bigger on the bow and I can cut off the excess there. I definitely want to make it shorter this way for the bows down here on the skirt. I think I'm going to make them at least an inch shorter. I don't yet know how many of these bows I'm going to make, but I think it's going to be somewhere between probably six to eight of them. So I am going to get on the rest of those bows. When I do sew them in place, I generally will take a tack or two so that this middle part stays where it needs to go. But honestly, it's pretty tight and taut on there. So it's really not going to go anywhere unless you like try to pull it off basically. So I just folded a bit of this bow back and pinned it in place and I feel like we're at a better scale here, especially since it's not a costume, it's a Disney bound. I feel like that scale is maybe a little better. This is definitely the scale I'm going to go with for the bows down here. So I am going to make all of those bows in this size and then decide if I want to take this in as well once I see the proportion of bow to bows. So I have now made all of the bows for the skirt. I wound up going with six bows. They all look like that. I have not put them on yet because I need to do the band around the skirt and I was trying to figure out how wide I want the band or even what type of band I want to do on there. I think I had mentioned I was thinking about a pleated band, but I've decided that I just want to do, I think, a bias cut band so that it can get around the circle, but it would just be like a flat band. And I've been chatting actually with Kira Lee from Kira Lee Cosplay and she was kind of helping me to make these decisions and I'm going to go with a band that is about the thickness of this belt. This is not the actual belt. I haven't made that yet, but it's about the thickness of that. So it's two inches wide. So I'm going to cut it like three and a quarter inches wide so that I can have the seam allowance and the hem and turn under and cut that on the bias and hopefully get that all out of the approximately one yard of fabric that I've left. I don't know how much I need because I don't know how wide this skirt is around. I should probably figure that out. And I've also decided to go with the big bow up here because with the smaller bows down below and all of this on here, I think the big bow really balances everything out. So I'm going to get to cutting those bands and I will show you what that looks like when it's done. First off, Lion says hi. 
Secondly, this is what I was trying to show you. It is the end of the night for me, about 11 p.m. right now on this work night. And I have the strip here, but I did my math wrong about how much strip I would need. I somehow calculated half of the circumference of this skirt, not the full. So I actually have about, lion, really dog? I actually have about two thirds of the skirt band on there. It needs to be pressed. And then every so often there will be an intersection of the bow where I think I'm gonna pinch it like this, maybe. But you can see this is how I affixed it. I didn't actually even serge it. It was on the bias so it doesn't fray. And it's about a half an inch from here. I actually just used the seam allowance as my guide where the bump from the seam allowance ended, that's where I stuck this edge. And then I sewed it right sides together and then it flips down like this. I had already hemmed it and while I hemmed it oh my gosh now Dora's here too while I hemmed it I shaped it into a kind of curve because what because this is a circle skirt so I wanted it to curve and since it's on the bias you can do that so that's where I'm at I need to cut out a couple more strips tomorrow for that portion of the skirt and join them to the existing strips press everything down add the bows on add the bow on the bodice as well and make the new belt for this dress and then we're done. Now that the whole band is on, I'm going around and I'm starting at the center front, which is right here. And then every, well, it's 21 inches from the center front to here, but really it's every 42 inches, I'm putting on one of the bows because that is the skirt circumference divided by six. So the bows are getting pinned on here. I'm also pinching up the pink fabric underneath the bow. So it's got like kind of little pleats in there and that is gonna all get sewn down, just kind of whipped on by hand. And also in the middle of each bow, I am going to sew down the pink band. I may actually wind up doing a couple more of these tacks. I'm just gonna do this by machine right over where the hem stitch is right there. But that way it doesn't wanna flip up because as you can see over here, it does kind of seem to want to. I mean, I haven't draped this down on the form with everything pressed yet, but it does seem like it's kind of wanting to flip up a little probably because a it's just a bias strip and b this there's all this bulk underneath from the gathers so yeah just putting in a few tacks in there you can see about 21 inches apart or exactly 21 inches apart and now i'm going to continue putting these bows on So overall, I am completely pleased with how this turned out. I really think that it's everything that I was hoping for in a fun, spinny, vintage inspired Cinderella pink dress. And the skirt is so spinny, like, oh my gosh. This is definitely a rival for my gunny socks Aween dress as far as the spinniest skirt that I've done. So that's super, super fun. And I decided, at least for now, not to do the ties or the tails of this bow. I was just looking at it both with and without, and I felt like when I added them in, it became a little bit more cartoony and less vintagey. And so I've opted to leave those out, at least for now. I might decide at some future point to add them in, but I think for now, I like it without them better. The other thing that I didn't actually wind up doing was making a new belt, I thought that I had a covered buckle kit for a belt. I don't. So with those covered buckle kits, they're very specific as to what dimensions they come in, if you can find them. I find that they're very, very difficult to find. So if you have a good source for them, do please leave that down below. But I looked through Amazon, they don't have any. And I was specifically looking for one that would fit a two inch belt. But I know that Finding one at all is going to be hard enough, let alone finding one that exactly fits a two inch belt. So at the point when I get one, I will make a belt for that buckle. But for now, this is actually the pink sash belt 
that I made for my Bambi dress that I did this summer for the Disneyland trip. And it's the sparkle pink fabric as opposed to the flat pink fabric like this, but I feel like they do still really, really go together. They're a hair off in shade, but they're very close. So I think that this is going to be just fine to bring this to Disney instead, since I know there is like pretty much zero chance that I can find the buckle before the Disney trip, because if it's not on Amazon, it's just not going to get here in time, even if I do find one somewhere. So the buckled belt will have to wait for the future, just like if I do decide to do these ties. But other than that, everything is exactly how I planned it. Honestly, I really love how the pink band is on the skirt. I think doing those little tacks every like I don't know, eight to 10 inches or so was exactly what it needed because it's not flipping up at all. So that was perfect. And the six bows, I think, I think six bows is plenty. Like they're just perfectly spaced in the skirt and they're not like hiding in the folds, I feel like, which is what I was worried about. So that is just, yeah, really, again, everything that I wanted. I think the bodice fit is one of the best fitting things that I've made recently that's not historical, like one of the best, you know, vintage or modern things. Uh, so I'm really glad that I figured out how to do just that angling of the bodice to get the bodice to fit right. Even the darts, I think, like, I don't know. I was a little worried that they would need more tweaking, but I think that they they came out right. So you know what? I'm going to go with it. So yeah, overall, super, super happy with this 1950s Cinderella project. And I'm so excited to get to wear it to Disney World, potentially for Dapper Day. I don't know yet if this is going to be an actually on Dapper Day look or a not on Dapper Day look, because I do have the ears and the backpack, and those aren't very dapper feeling to wear those. So if I want to wear it with those, it feels like maybe a not dapper day thing, whereas like a hat and gloves and stuff would feel a little bit more dapper day. So I have to figure out what day I'm wearing it, but I'm excited to wear it overall anyway. So overall, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patron, Sharon, and a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Again, there is a link down below in the description so that you can get your free one month trial of premium membership for Skillshare. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!